The purpose of this video is to show you an example of how to convolve two rectangular pulses. So we'll just start with the pulses. Um, while I'm drawing this, uh, this is an example that is used in almost every textbook I've ever seen. Um, it's useful in the sense that it helps you to figure out what uh, or helps you to figure out how convolution works, it's probably not particularly useful in terms of the result. Um, you sometimes see it used when you're looking at uh, computing Fourier transforms and such, but generally speaking, it's more instructive in terms of learning how to do convolution than it is something that you'll want to refer back to. Okay, so let's assume that we have a uh, signal x of t that is a pulse of, uh, of uh, amplitude 1 and it goes from 0 to 1. And let's come up with a second pulse that we're going to convolve here and we'll call this h of t. And uh, let's see, let's make this a long pulse so it'll go out to 3, and again have an amplitude of 1. So, um, to make sure that it's clear how this, uh, how you do these convolutions, uh, let's uh, stop for a second in terms of actually computing it and go through the steps. So if you recall from the convolution integral, x of t involved with h of t is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau and I can also write this as um, an integral of x of t minus tau h. So the first step in actually working this integral this h of t minus tau has the effect of um, uh, uh, mirroring h about the line, uh, well, about the uh, y-axis, and then shift it to the value of t that you have here in this integral. Okay, so that's the first step. Is you take this h, you flip it about um, the y-axis, and then you shift it uh, right or left so that where it, uh, what was at zero is now at t. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is multiply. So you multiply the x and the h, and see what you get. Then you integrate in other words you find the area under the product of x and h, and all of this is kind of like the shampoo bottle where it says rinse and repeat. You repeat this for various values of t. Okay, so the idea here is you're going to do this in, in principle at least you could do this for every possible value of t and then you'd know for sure um, what the uh, what the answer should be. In practice what you do is you look at uh, whether or not um, well you look for the values of t that are going to change uh, the basic structure of your integral. So with that as uh, an introduction, let's go back to our um, to our uh, two signals and let's start by graphing again x of t because we're going to want to lay on top of it a, a rotated 
and shifted version of H. And I have to back up a second. Uh, we're going to write these as functions of tau because tau is the variable that we're integrating over. So um, if we take H and flip it about the line at t or tau is equal to zero, then it looks like this. So it goes from minus three to zero at an amplitude of one. Okay, so this is h of minus tau. And now when we put the t in, uh, it shifts it to wherever t is. So let's suppose for the sake of argument, let's just randomly choose a value of t is equal to one half. Okay, so h of t minus tau, um, this value here that's at zero is going to be mapped to one half. And so this point here gets mapped to um, minus three plus a half, so that'd be minus two and a half. Okay, so in this particular case, my h of t minus tau looks like this. Okay, again, because we've chosen a value of one half for t, and I've done that fairly arbitrarily. In a minute, we'll talk about how you go about actually choosing uh, reasonable values for t. But let's look at what we actually get then when we do this convolution. When we multiply x of tau and h of t minus tau, in this region, for every value of tau less than zero, x of tau is equal to zero. So the product of x of tau and h of t minus tau for all the values of tau less than zero is equal to zero. Okay. Similarly, for values of tau greater than one half, um, h of t minus tau is zero. And so, and uh, farther out, uh, both of them are zero, so their product will be zero. Between zero and one half, the um, both of these uh, signals have a value of one, so their product is going to be one. Okay, so if we go back to our uh, list of things to do here, uh, we've now achieved multiplication. The next thing on that list, as you'll notice, is to integrate. So integration is going to be finding the area under the product of these two, two waveforms. And so I have something here where the width is badly drawn, but it's one half, and the height is one. So at a value of t is equal to one half, I know that uh, my x of t convolved with h of t is also equal to one half. I got that by taking the width of one half, this width here, and multiplying it by one. Okay, so that basically gives us um, the convolution for this one value of t, for t is equal to one half. So what are we going to do in general? How do we figure out how many different places we need to uh, slide, uh, or how many different values of t we need to look at in order to compute this in or compute the convolution? And uh, I'll actually stop this video now, and uh, in part two, we'll show you how to figure out which values of t you need to look at in order to compute the convolution.